Hello and welcome back to Elliot's podcast. Uh, this is a very special edition here. We are in Joseph Workman Park with my old friend Matt James. <laughs> and uh, ha- Matt, how are you doing today? Oh, just fine. Thank you. Yeah, so uh, let me get this level up here on this one. So let's um, let's just quickly talk about, um, you know, Ram Dass, the... <laughs> The, the classic hippie, he has this uh, tagline, a slogan that says, be here now. And so I want to help situate uh, our, our listeners and our viewers because some people don't even see the video. But if you did see the video, we're, we're in front of a wall. But Matt, I was wondering if you could tell me a bit about this park and the wall that we're in front of. Yeah, um, the park is just a lovely little parkette down in King West. Um, sort of tucked away. You might not even ever know it was here. But this uh, wall is uh, part of the CAMH complex. And this is, um, I believe, a heritage site. The wall itself, at least, is is part of a one of these heritage things where there are rules around what can and can't be done to it. But it's a very, very old wall. It's one of the original boundary walls of CAMH. Um, a little bit of a dark history, I guess, is that it was built by um, people who were... I don't know what the right word is. Um, not, I, I think in the old days it was something more like a prison or a or an asylum, and so it, it was built by the people who were inmates or patients. I, I I don't know if they'd still call them patients, but it, clearly we don't make um, modern uh, mental health patients build infrastructure for where it is they'll be staying. So uh, that that's what this wall is. It was built by people who then were not allowed to leave. Right. And um, yeah, it's pretty it's it's pretty dark, but it's 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 nice that it's preserved. And yeah, I mean, so the the other th- significant point here is, is that Matt lives and records and, and operates uh, a studio out of uh, his home, which is like a, a stone's throw away from where this camera is, is located. So I was wondering if you could tell us a bit about that, and, uh, and and just by the way, it was really convenient because when we come out here to do, when I've done some of these park videos, it's like whatever I have with me is what's going to happen, kind of like going camping, and uh, it's just, it was kind of a relief to see I pulled up in front of Matt's home, and like if I had forgotten any little thing, it would have been no problem. So Matt, just a reminder, the question is, uh, can you just tell us a bit about what, what goes on in the townhouse over there. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I, I record stuff. Okay, so let me start that again. Um, I, I work with a, a broad a, array of clients. Um, you know, I, I compose music for, you know, projects like uh, video games, uh, the odd um, sort of corporate video and things like that. I record people's voiceovers. Um, I also compose a lot of music. So, um, uh, my own songwriting and, and stuff like that. Um, presently, entering your world, Elliot, and doing a lot of dance music, to be honest, um, because of a, an interesting sort of opportunity that's come my way recently. Um, and uh, I also teach there, so it's a it's a a recording studio for anything sound based, and uh, also a music learning studio. Great, yeah, and um, just before, in case I forget, how do people find out more about it before we get into all the other stuff, just so I have it here? Sure, townhousemusic.ca. Is it townhousemusic.com? Is it both? Let's find out. He's saying it's, uh, he, it's there's, uh, it's there's a debate com. here if it's... It's dot com. Oh it's dot com. <laughs> I know, that's how it works, is you could be... <sighs> yeah, you could forget your own domain name. Yeah, well, because I don't... Uh, you know, Elliot, you've asked how people find out more about this place, and the fact that I don't have these answers indicates a little bit about where I'm at business-wise. <laughs> this is why I need an organized guy like you in my life to give me pro tips. <laughs> well, I think it's all an uh, organic uh, process, right? And I think a, l- a lot of the... Dot com. It's dot com, yeah. The music, a lot of the music world is very much a word of mouth and relationships and, and friendships. So um, without further ado, can you... T- we're going to... Um, pl- we'll have Matt play the first his first song, and Matt, can you just tell us a bit about what you're playing and so forth, and then we'll we'll switch up some gear here. 
Yeah, this is a song called Asking Plainly, and uh, I think it might relate to some of the topics you uh, discuss on your podcast. This is sort of, at least parts of it are about um, the faith that you need to have in what it is that you're doing in terms of writing music or making music or anything. And, and it might be a bit of a pessimistic outlook there, but it's about a little bit of the, the painful struggle when you find you're making something and then you believe in it for a maybe too fleeting of a moment and then suddenly you're in the opposite realm where you don't believe in it and it's it's crushing when that happens and you can oscillate back and forth 20,000 times in one hour if you're good at that like I am awesome okay so let's uh let's hear it and we can chat a bit more about that so this is Matt James on Elliot's podcast and just give me a second here while I, I flip stuff and we will we'll have that first song ready Daydream little fragments of impossible events and the next day in the morning Wonder why would your imagination Conjure such an awful mess What took wing the mirror asking plainly If the face reflected in it Is the same as that of someone Who could think of such a thing Make a loving effort Try to get some meaning out before the work is finished come to view your honest making in the shadows of your doubt every time asking far too plainly if the person who would offer these ideas for a dollar should even have a dime After sunrise out of fear of what the light might do Beating down and shining all too plainly on A past that is far better left alone To turn to dust inside an old forgotten drawer Build a suit of armor of your best philosophies Then lament how ineffectual Strongest bits of wisdom can become inside a heart that grieves. That's the rub. Ideas do not change the way that people do is habit. So the wise don't live by phrases on the most important things. Ideas do not change the way that people do. The way that people do. All the time All right, thank you so much. That was a beautiful first piece. Can you remind me the name of it again? Asking plainly. So it made me the 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 preamble that that you that you mentioned in the title uh, makes me wonder. Like sometimes we we overcomplicate everything, um, and I'm I'm kind of some questions I have for you today is like you know for example you you teach a lot of people music. And uh, I, I've started taking, getting back into guitar a lot more seriously in the past few years, around just before the pandemic had started. 
And I, I think the interesting uh, observation that I had from taking up guitar again is the, the, the kind of battle that people go through in order to pick up their instrument and play. And I'm wondering what, it, what your experience is like and how you talk to uh, students about like scheduling your, your practice day and trying to not have like a lot of resistance to like, like you just got to like ask plainly, okay, well like plainly, can I just please pick up my guitar and get warmed up? So I'm wondering if you can, can comment a bit about that. Yeah. I talked to a lot of my students about, um, how practice, um, can become a part of your life despite all these doubts and overcomplications that we make. Um, one thing is <clears throat> people tend to have an all or nothing attitude about a lot of things and music is one of them where we're so aspirational. We, we pick up an instrument in our lives because we want to be good at it and the desire to be good at something often just gets in the way of doing it because the minute we have that idea of being good, the second we play we're measuring against this ideal of being good that is very antithetical to the progress of just the, the process, I should say, of just becoming um, immersed in doing the activity. And that's how you get good. So it's this measuring stick that we dangle in front of ourselves. that kind of wrecks things um, sometimes. Um, on a more functional level, I sort of ask people to consider what a structured practice routine would be for them, meaning you know, it's really not all that complicated, but we we should think of what great musicians do to practice and not worry about how great we are. So, you know, pretty standard stuff. Start with scales. Have a written down order of things that you'll do in your practice. Will I start with scales <clears throat> as a finger and, and, and hand warm up and then move on to some, you know, st strumming work or chord work? Um, basically, just intentionally putting some you know, nuts and bolts things in order that you do that you know to be good for musicianship before then diving into free play or practicing a piece of music that's more emotionally laden where you'll more likely encounter your own measuring stick of how good you are. Um, so structuring a practice routine is essential. And the last thing I'd say about this all or nothing attitude that, that comes to people is um, if you had 60 minutes in a week to practice. There's always value in having a 60 minute burst, but I'd say if you only had 60 minutes in a week to practice, it would be better to spread that 60 minutes out across 10 day, 10 minutes, six days in the week, rather than 60 minutes on Saturday. Because what you end up with is, it's like learning a language in a way, you know, uh, by doing a little bit every day, I think you accomplish a lot more and, in, and ingrain things a lot more than by doing one burst sporadically. Yeah, that, that's awesome. I mean, a lot of stuff came up that I thought about from that. I mean, one of them is I was a, a big, like, I, there's a bunch of kids that are already starting to play because this is the morning. So the the playground is starting to get some activity. So in our next piece, we're going to probably start, and there was a dog running around. So we're going to start hearing the sounds of play mixed in with, with Matt's uh, performance. And... I think it's a good metaphor because we, when we lose the sense of play, which is inherent in, I think, mammals, but probably all animals, and maybe the world was created out of a sense of play, I don't know, but um, like the dog, a dog's default mode is, is they want to play and they, they, they even have postures for getting into play. And so I just thought it, would, it was nice, and I actually read recently that Rod Stewart has a side hobby which is he builds model model it was in the book um that i've been reading by oliver berkman uh, um, called four thousand weeks about um you know the the finite time we have on on earth and our life and rod stewart actually makes model train sets as his hobby and it's he's much more free to to work on that because he doesn't have the pressures that he has as a as a music musician and it made me think why couldn't the musician just treat their their act like they they were building like as if it was a hobby so i want i wonder if you have any thoughts on that well the the idea of having a sense of play in playing music is beautiful um but elusive 
um, just like enjoying yourself while performing or being happy in life. These are these are like lofty, beautiful, noble, admirable things to pursue, but they're not always possible. Um, for a lot of us, myself included, there's massive performance anxiety that is right in the foreground um, when you go and play, especially in front of an audience or on a stage um, that can really you talked about be here now or wh whatever that phrase was from Ram Das. It's the most unpresent mindset to have s performance anxiety. When you have performance anxiety, you're simultaneously imagining some future where you've failed already, you know, and, and, the re and, you know, and you're also thinking backwards into why am I not better than this and looking back at your... So you're everywhere but where you are. Um, so uh, you were talking, though, about um, the sense of play. So in terms of having a particular mindset in playing music, I think the best approach is to accept whatever the mindset is and acclimatize to whatever you're feeling and, and learn to just um, be in it. You know, it's not possible to enforce confidence or comfort or happiness you know, so what we need to do is, well, I shouldn't say we need to do, what I'm trying to do in, in, very hard in my life is to, and life in general, by the way, and not just music, but um, is to experience the state that I'm in as the state that I'm in and l learn to be aware of other things that happen in that state that maybe I can grab onto and control more than I can the overarching state itself. So for example, if I was on stage feeling extremely nervous, um, I might not be able to just banish nervousness, uh, but I'm, I am able to tune in to, let's say, oh my God, I start breathing shallowly and my glutes tense up like I'm going to crack a walnut with my butt cheeks. Um, <laughs> and you know, those, those kinds of things with practice, you can begin to get in on them and, you know, change them. And in that way, you change the experience of being very nervous or very um, unplayful but a sense of play I think comes most easily when you have others to play with um, so playing alone is a place where it's even harder to uh, find that yeah and I guess that's what's interesting about some of the you know computer music stuff and and you'd see that like Herbie Hancock was big into computers Frank Zappa uh, adopted them near the end of his life and they do offer this sense of like a video game world where you can, you know, you have your drum machine. That, like that's, I guess, where a lot of it began was like, okay, we can have a, a home environment. And that really created the solo um, musician. But I think, I'll, I, you know, and it's funny you said like my world is dance music, but I'd say and now it's, it's become more w far back um, for me. And I've moved a lot towards like... Uh, Moving away from the computer, I use a lot more like four track recorder style stuff, um, moving away from tempo grids. And um, so it is kind of like this this give and take when you're alone and you, you have these tools that help you jam. But I think you're right that like it is it is a I, I guess music really is ultimately a conversation um, with two or more musicians in some forms. I mean, that that's very elusive because we also, ha like, we have you here playing solo right now, and that's probably just as impactful. Uh, so <laughs> solo versus group musician is an interesting uh, thing to comment on, I guess. Sure, yeah, and I'm by no means saying that um, music itself relies on having more than one musician. I'm more just saying that to summon something like a sense of play, I think is is a bit easier when you have someone else in there with you. Um, that doesn't mean you can't have a great sense of play in solo playing. And one of the great joys of my life is just free imp improvisation, and that's something I do very playfully and, and without any concern of even having an audience, let alone what an audience would think if there was one. <clears throat> so it's when I play composed music, which is where I spend most of my mental energy, that there becomes a lot of hurdles to entering into a, a feeling of playfulness or ease, relaxation. Yeah. Yeah, and just before we get to the next um, 
song. So I I have battery anxiety, which is similar to like how people with electric cars can't drive very far because I'm like, is the camera gonna? Um, they drain batteries, but uh, so I want to just ask quickly, um, uh, how like what is the songwriting process for you? Like, do you try to say I'm gonna do a song every week or? Uh, yeah, how does that work for you managing? Um, and then how, and maybe a bit of uh, info about like, do you, you think you have a bit of a formula for, for getting songs together? Because I would say from my own end, that's a big source of stress too, is like, oh, I'm not writing enough. And then if I only had the, the method for cranking them out, but then if you had the method for cranking them out, you kind of get bored of the method. So I'm just wondering if you've gone through a lot of that and, and what your songwriting process looks like. Great questions. Um, I've been writing a lot in a lot of different styles these days. So I mentioned uh, that I'm doing a lot of dance music and those are being cranked out in a particular way. Um, in terms of writing enough and writing often enough and being able to write, that's something that ebbs and flows in my life. I'm a, I'm a writer of music. I've always been since I was 10 years old, been writing songs all the time. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. But um, I've gone through some big lulls during hard times in life, you know feeling down about yourself or something and things you don't write as much. Um, so I'm losing track of, there was two parts to this question. One yeah, of them the, was the, the cranking the songs out and then, um, the method, the for method writing. for writing. Yeah. So, um, well, you know, these days I'm writing a ton and I'm really, really happy about that. Um, in terms of a method for writing songs, I think it really, in my life, depends on what it is that I'm doing. You talked about computers. So in all this dance music that I'm writing now, there's this essential integration with a computer and a bunch of other gear and things that uh, is totally ingrained in the writing process. But when writing songs like the one I just played and the one I'm going to play next, um, I've gone through a long transition in my life that I value highly and that I'd love to share right now. One of the, when I started writing songs when I was very young, it was guitar up. So I would write a, what I thought was a cool guitar line, and then I'd start figuring out how words and melodies and other instrument parts are going to fit over that. And that's a great way of writing. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that, and I don't in any way reject it. But over time, I've come to a very different approach. Probably about 15 years ago, I started writing in this other way. Because I was doing a manual labor job, and I wanted to keep writing, I started thinking about, can I just write songs while I'm wow. <laughs> working, you know? Um, <laughs> That's folk music. That's the origin of folk music and, and blues and stuff, I think, right? Sure. I, I, and uh, if, the, if there's something of that legacy in what I'm doing now, I, that's fantastic. And the way that I think of it now, it's both philosophical and important for my... It's important for how I feel about the song, and it's important for the method of writing itself. What I like to do for lyric songs is I like to begin without any concept of melodies, chords, music, really at all, and begin with a lyric or a stanza or two, you know, just some fragment of language that I've written into words that I think I want to say on earth. You know, that's the, the beginning of it. I write some words that I think are worth saying. And then, you know, through a lot of practice, you know, even your high school creative writing teacher is going to teach you that there's inside of language there is often an inherent meter and I think that if you listen into words that are there there's nothing inherent about a melody that's inside of them but it, they can to an individual melodic mind they can indicate a melody so I begin with a lyric and then I try to hear a melody and a rhythm for that lyric and from there then I go to my guitar and it's a beautiful, for me, a beautiful act of discovery where I've got this melody and if you know much about, even a little bit about harmony uh, in the sense of chords and, and, you know, the musical sense of harmony, I go to my guitar and then start exploring the options of chords that are implied by, by what I've written. There's no single implication, often there's many possibilities, but it's it's a very organic process for me to begin, first of all, with the intention of what do I want to share thematically here? And I choose to begin with words in that sense and to then go to my instrument and let those, the words and the melody that I've begun with be, be the seedling for the music that will accompany. Um, 
I still do sometimes write in the opposite way where I'll come up with some cool, for the dance music stuff especially, uh, come up with some cool music and, and then figure out um, words and melodies to go on top. But that, that is sort of my songwriter process, an important part of my songwriter process these days is um, that. Yeah, that, that's really nice. I mean, it reminds me of, I've mentioned the uh, uh, author Mark Nepo. I don't know if you've read any of his no, work. He, he has a book called The Drinking from the River of Expression, and he's a poet. And I think a lot of the, like the, the title of the book, and they're all little short essays about the creative process. And I think it is often a sense of um, like bottling up some kind of inspiration that is that has come to you in the moment and then tracing that inspiration back to its source which is kind of what you mentioned with the words like where where is it taking me and then you find your way to the guitar and then you and then you put it together and then it, it takes on its own life and that's i think what the the kind of the river is referring to because rivers um you know they they are traced back to the ocean and so anyways i think that's really beautiful um uh process and it's, it is quite inspiring and you know it would be funny to like like pick away even further and like what time do you write at? But I think I think the people should just get the gist of like that's that's the gist of everything, and it's not mechanical. It's it's an organic process, and as you said, yes, there are, everyone goes through lulls where you just like I can't get my tools to work, I can't uh, get my flow to work, and it happens, and that's what they call writer's block. But we all emerge, I think, stronger, um, you know, from from when we get through those pe- those periods. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think a little bit of trust in yourself. If you've ever written a song and then come to a spot, or any piece of music, by the way, and then come to a spot where you can't get there for whatever reason, um, trusting in yourself in that moment where you're in a lull or in a moment of writer's block, patience and trust, you know, that that what what was possible for you before will be possible again, and it's not by forcing or certainly despairing that we get forward out of that yeah that's right and um and the uh i i, for, I forgot what I, w- I was gonna wrap that up with something that um i i have a little bit of a block myself <laughs> but it's uh i think that's really well said but uh the, the main thing is yeah that it will come out eventually and um that's right is is like you don't have you don't have to be beating yourself up um because uh, that's that's counterintuitive, and it's similar to what you said about the sta- being on stage, and like um, you know, feeding into to fears and stuff. You you can't really feed the demon. You have to um, acknowledge the demons there, and then say then you say I'm not going going to engage with you right now. I'm going to play my own game, and that's usually the long game, I guess. But um, I do want to uh, let's. I want to hear another song. So what's this one called? Elliot, this is close to both of our hearts, and you just mentioned rivers. This is a song that I wrote pretty recently um, about a place that both Elliot and I love very much. It's called Lady Evelyn Shores, and it's really in a style. So this is a style song, you know, like I tried to get inside the the vibe of sort of ballads, like in the style of sort of Stan Rogers, Northwest Passage kind of thing. Um, so I'm in a style here, but it's about the, the region of Tomogamy, where Elliot and I have both gone canoeing and camping a lot in our lives um, and uh, it's you know a beautiful place that means a ton to me um, so this song is as much about the beauty of that place as it is about f- the pain of feeling away from that place sometimes where where I live most of the time right right here um, it, not that here most of the time is not that here is bad most of the time but being here most of the time can sometimes make me feel bad Toronto is, you know, not always the most relaxing or uh, creativity-inducing place. Um, so the song is about longing for a beautiful place, I guess. Wow, that's awesome. Okay, so here is Matt with his uh, second song, and we will be back uh, after to wrap up this episode. So, um, yeah, let's hear it, and great. Been drifting along but never traveling Been listening too long to my own heart babbling 
Well, the river is wide and the shore is a forest of saplings. Well, I shouldn't mind if my whole life is rivers, summer and spring, autumn and winter. Life would be better if I could spend all of it on Lady Evelyn Shores. I live in the town that's always kept me. It's places like these where the people are ever attempting. And the streets here are hard, and they always remind me I'm aging. Well, I might be here, but my mind's on the sturgeon, heading downstream, growing more certain life would be better if I could spend all of it on Lady Evelyn Shores. The heart always knows place where it's freest, no sense denying what I know is sweetest, yet I go narrowly towards a horizon so wide. I know I've got a soul, it lives with the red pines, the ways I might go, on water and black lines, the going ain't easy, but I won't be wasting my time. The sound of the wind singing in water rushing in song of my heart free again on the shores of Evelyn sometimes I don't know my spirit is suffering and my granddad said a person can get used to anything well the mind has a heart of its own that it's always protecting Well I'm sick and tired of all of the noises Concrete and wires, too many choices Life would be better if I could spend all of it on Lady Evelyn Shores You can call me naive but I'm not listening Woods are alive, the forest is humming and breathing, and sometimes Toronto feels more like a gallows for dreaming. Well, I should just drive the long road to solace, paddle away, get down to my smallest. Life would be better if I could spend all the Awesome. Thank you so much, Matt, for another, that was another beautiful piece. Uh, and I really could hear, there was also that, um, I think you might have referenced it, the more the more popular guy was Gordon Lightfoot, right, who did a lot of these sort of Canadianas. And I think it, yeah, it's really, um, it's really nice to be able to like, you know, I, and the funny thing about the theme of that song is, is like, I've al- always felt a little displaced. Um in Toronto, I mean, partly because it's a really weird topic, and but like you know, p- partly as like uh, 
uh, my my roots were like in um, Eastern Europe, and so and then so for many years I thought that I belonged in like Berlin as like a electronic um, person, and and I just didn't feel home here. And I think um, over the years I've I've come to to say like, well, actually Canada is the most amazing place, and like that like and it, it I can see why it helps create creative people because <laughs> we have a lot of space to think like if you think about like us like new york city is probably creative because they're pushing each other so hard but like in canada like uh, i was recently as the we j- i just finished the three lake algonquin video series and um and matt had referenced that i uh, that we you know we really went to camp together as youngsters and we actually also went we we, we took out a canoe trip together with some kids um it was it was a really interesting trip but that really is our ex- a lot of our our experience and i thought that this the song really summed up a lot of these ideas r- really well that uh you're you're able to like okay take the benefits of like where we live and you know and then we come back to the city and we probably record it on the on the machines right mm-hmm. yeah um Sorry, is there a question inside of that? Uh, no, no question. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I just uh, so I the agree with you. <laughs> I totally agree with you. It, yeah, this place, any city is is um, well, we're very far removed from nature, even when we're in a very wooded park. And um, I don't know if there's anything actually like biologically installed in us about nature, but my experience in my life having found such joy and found such freedom and peace um, in in places that are not the city um, kind of creates probably artificially a little bit of a like oh man I could never feel at my most at ease here in Toronto whereas away from here I can but that also creates interesting friction and fodder for for writing and for for doing anything, for being motivated to go and have new experiences, not just musical ones, but being motivated to go on an, on an adventure, whether it's to nature or just to some place other than your town, your city. Yeah, and it, it, it does lead to this, like, this uh, truth about, like, we are always kind of upset in some way. So I've heard, like, sometimes people would, they, like, they want the, wo- the cabin in the woods, but then when they're there they're kind of miserable because like they're they might be detached and like so there are there is something kind of helpful about the routines of the city and that sort of thing and then also like you know when i was on the recent hiking trip it was like wow we we got to see the most amazing um three lakes but but the work to get there was was quite grueling and there was on that final day like matt asked me before we recorded like how was the trip? It was like, yeah, it was amazing. But like, I, I think I almost like collapsed. Like before, when we made it to that final, cause I guess on the final stretch, your mind is starting to give up. It doesn't, it, it's like, we're done here. And when's this campsite going to show up? And then when I got to it, finally, I was like, it took me a few hours to like recover, um, socially to when I, we met up with, with my friends that we were with. So. Yeah. Well, going, it's, Going to nature is, if you live in a city, uh, maybe you romanticize or love nature or idealize it, but to get as far out into it as we sometimes do, um, you know, shedding every single, almost every single thing you rely on, it can be very, even if you've wanted to be there and to do it, it can be very, um, I think you used the word displacing when talking about it in the city, but yeah, to get out in the woods and achieve the, the freedom that you've been hoping for, if that's where you find a bit of freedom can be uh, uncomfortable in its own ways, including the exertion required, like you've mentioned, or or even just suddenly realizing that, you know, that that you are, you are indeed removed now from the sink and the, the fridge and the phone, which is my favorite thing about <laughs> getting away yeah. from the city. Yeah, and you're also reminded of of your limits as a as a you know a human when you're when you're finally thrust out there, and um, music does that to you too because like you like I'm I'm working on the piece right now Caprice Arab by uh, Tariga. I don't know why I thought 
you know, it kind of sounded manageable, and it is, but, like, and I'm getting a lot of progress, but, like, I'm coming a- across, when you throw yourself, I guess, into classical and jazz, you come across your limits, and and now it's time for you to decide, am I capable of, of, of rising to the occasion on on the hero's journey, or am I going to retreat a bit and go back a level to something a bit more, you know, a gymnopity, a gymnopity or, or something by Satie. Um, but anyways, yeah, I think that there is a, there is definitely um, uh, a similarity between pushing yourself in, in how we go about like our adventures and, and music is an adventure and writing a new song is an adventure, right? You come across like um, blank spots where like, I don't know what, what lyric or what, what thing goes in this section. Yeah. And I, uh, you know, just dovetailing with that a little bit, I think, uh, actually, I'm, my neighbor right over there uh, gave me this uh, thought recently on my impending fatherhood. I'm going to be a dad oh, pretty soon. Oh, wow. Yeah. Congratulations. Yeah. Thank you. Um, wow. But I think it really applies here, yeah. and it's a beautiful sentiment. Uh, all growth is uncomfortable. Growth is... When you grow and change and learn, you are bound to encounter, as you've discussed, the pushing of your limits the expansion of them, or at least to feel them and see them right there, what those limits are and have been. And I think, yeah, discomfort in doing things creative, discomfort in doing things um, that are outside of the norm, these are, that discomfort is, in an optimistic sense, that's a, that discomfort is there to show you you're growing, you're, you're changing, you're learning. And... Um, that's an okay thing. Very okay. Yeah. And my, my, um, my, uh, I keep repeating it a lot lately, but I, I say that the fear is, is the map, which it shows you where you need to go. And so if you're fearing like jumping into a certain thing or whatever, it, it's kind of actually pointing you exa- It's like, it's a compass. Like you have to actually go there. You can't, um, uh, you, you can't run away, but I just wanted to, um, wrap up, um, and ask you what what are some of your you know short term or, or long term goals with music and 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 what you'd like to see you know for the music world if, um, in general like in your your experience I know it's been a really weird time with uh, with with pandemic related things and actually an interesting time too with changing the way we we present music and and that sort of thing so I'm just wondering some general thoughts on where your head is at with with music and all this right now. Well, for a while now, I've been on a huge writing kick, both in the style that you've just heard me playing uh, with my band Moonlight Flood, um, and also um, in this dance music thing. Um, so my my goals, like, okay, if I had to put career music, career goals as one style of goal here, I'd say I'm trying to write a ton of dance top lines. Should I define this term, top lines? <laughs> yeah, but for people who aren't familiar with the songwriting process, please do. Yeah, a, a top line is a, a I, I don't know when this emerged, but it's actually a very cool um, music economy in dance music where it's sort of like um, in Nashville and the country world where it's not assumed that a songwriter should be the best singer or the singer should be the best songwriter. Uh, there's a division of labor in dance music, not always, but often where um, great DJs are looking for what are called top lines, which are from great songwriters and singers who have gone and done the work of composing lyrics, melodies, recording them, making them final and ready for a full production. But you just present these lyrics and melodies over top of a single, potentially disposable background instrument, like a piano or a synth or what have you. And then you shop it around to dance producers and DJs who then listen and say, oh yeah, I can I can work this top line I can strip that down and make my music underneath this that's how a lot of dance songs get written not all but a lot so career wise I'm trying to make some movement with dance top lines because a I never expected I'd be in that world but it's super fun for me Um, and I just have some opportunities there right now I had a song do well uh, at the beginning of the pandemic that I co-wrote in that way a top line that got picked up by a couple prominent DJs in the Netherlands Um, so I'm building on that other goals are just to keep writing my uh, singer-songwriter stuff. And the most important goal in that world for me is to continue to 
make it a thing that is for its own sake. Yes, I will continue to perform and want to continue to perform. Yes, I have aspirations in my pipe dreams that maybe I could gain some further recognition for the kinds of songs that I write, but whether or not I ever gain recognition, the most important thing would be to enjoy it all. And the way I think to do that is to ingrain the notion that it is for its own sake. The writing of the song and the playing of the song for no one even is already a completion in, in the most important function of my musical life. Yeah, that's beautiful. And I, I think, um, you know, the top line thing speaks to me a bit about what we talked about earlier. It probably is a sense you can have have, have a sense of play with it because it's not your, your, your baby so much. It's a different thing. And then um, and, and to do things uh, for themselves is also is very powerful. And it makes it makes us realize that like that that is one of the problems with with social media often is, is that it, it kind of. It, it once that enters the picture we get very twisted around but i think i think over time creative people will come to um adopt better strategies on how to manage that relationship where you can still do things for itself and you're you know, you're pushing the creative boundaries and you're not really getting pushed around by by the um the need to kind of be liked and all that sort of thing so uh, yeah i mean Totally, Elliot. You and I are on the same page there, 100%. Um, and even if it sounds hollow, which I don't think it does, um, I really do believe that, yeah, we can work towards these large aspirations, which are good and okay to have. Like, I'd love to have my song played on the radio or, or something like that, or I'd, I'd love to impress a large crowd. And all of those are good things. But there's this other work we can do about that is equally aspirational, maybe even a higher form of aspiration, to tap into what's fulfilling about the process, to tap into what's fulfilling and, and complete and done about just making something and not even, yes, sharing is great, very important, but can we, can I get very, very fulfilled, tap the most fulfillment that I can out of just what I've always been doing and just just writing because that's that's the creative moment yeah and it and that that also pairs up with a lot of the stuff about the effortless mastery um that Kenny Werner wrote and talked about which is that like you know you 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 can come from a place of fullness and you can create an, an amazing experience in playing music even even if you had the 10 minutes a day that you you had to slice up your 60 minutes in the week you can bring your full force to that 10 minutes and it can be a that can be a beautiful goal in itself and i know the critic in the brain the inner critic was like yeah well you're not going to make any money doing that <laughs> you're not going to sell a lot of hits with that yeah. but uh, but you know this is this is where the shift is is having a better creating a better relationship with with music and, and art making in general so absolutely uh, Matt, we have to be cognizant of time. We, we he's got students coming up soon, and and I'm sure the machines that we're recording on are starting to to burn up, and batteries are blowing up. So, uh, Matt, I wanted to thank you so much for amazing uh, performances and discussion. I really appreciated you having me down at Joseph Workman Park down here down in downtown Toronto. If you're not from Toronto, come by and visit us in our lovely city. And we have a beautiful fall season ahead, and you can go up into nature as well and see the trees changing. Um, so, Matt, thank you very much. Matt James, Townhouse Music. Thank you very much, Elliot. It's my pleasure, and I really appreciate you having me. Awesome. Okay, well, we'll have to continue this discussion again soon. Um, so in the meantime, thanks for listening to Elliot's podcast, and take care. <laughs>